I fell out of love with Stephen King. I know that's a crazy thing to say, but after a few duds, I just, I had to take a break from his work. That's until the start of this year when I was recommended Misery by one of my friends, and that really gave me the motivation I needed to continue exploring his vart. That's why I spent the last month reading four of his very famous works, trying to see, can I fall back in love with Stephen King? The first book that I read was... We started off so strong with this one. For context, the only book that I've rated this high from Stephen King was The Stand. And to be honest, I feel like Pet Cemetery dethrones it because it just hit me so, so intensely. Never in my life had I had an experience where a book stressed me out so much that I physically had to stop reading it for a week. That's what I had to do with Pet Cemetery because it just, and you know, you know the part I'm talking about if you read the book, but I just, I was shaking and I, I knew what was going to happen and it was this dread building and building and building and I just, I couldn't do it, man. I couldn't do it. I just can't do it. I can't. But what is Pet Cemetery about? It's about the Creed family as they move into this new house behind which there is a cemetery full of dead animals, okay? We're told that it's there because the house is next to a highway and so animals tend to get and we find out that our main character's daughter has a cat named Church. From the start, we have this tension of, well, we know the book is called Pet Cemetery, we know this is Stephen King, and we know that there's a cat named Church and a highway. Something's gonna happen, okay? Now, I have to warn you, the first half of this book is quite slow, and I'm really 50-50 on if it should have been this long or if he could have trimmed it a little bit, because on one hand, we get to know Lewis's family very, very intimately, and all of that is truly necessary for us to appreciate the back half, I think, the ending sequence as well, and the ending scene, which I have to say, Stephen King nailed this one. It's one of the best final chapters that I've ever read in my life, I think. But on the other hand, it's just so long and sometimes I feel like it's a bit drawn out. And so, I don't know, I feel like we could have edited down some of that part, but yeah, I don't know, I'm very 50-50. Another personal connection that I had to the text was the fact that our main character is a doctor and I'm a med student. So I found a lot of the descriptions to be very interesting to me, very visceral, and it really helped situate me personally in the mindset of a doctor who is taught to save lives, but then is slowly coming to realize that maybe dead is better. That is up until a point, and I won't spoil this for you because I personally didn't know anything about Pet Cemetery, and I I'm really glad that I didn't because I did not see what was gonna happen around the halfway point coming. This is definitely one that I would put a trigger warning for. I don't wanna say what it is because, again, spoilers, but if you've lost someone in your family recently, then maybe wait a little bit before reading this one. Uh, but yeah, search up the trigger warnings at your own. Anyways, we started off very, very strong with Pet Cemetery, And so when I jumped into the second book, I really hoped that we would continue this streak. The second book was... Christine really surprised me. It's a very different book and I don't have the emotional connection that I think a lot of other readers will have because, you know, I did, just didn't have the experience of being a teenage boy. I have been procrastinating getting my driver's license for the past few years. <laughs> and I just, I don't know, I've never really been interested all that much in cars. What did he say? But that being said, I could still very much relate to the idea of friendships going awry and caring for someone and seeing them fade away and, and questioning where's that line of I want to help them, but it's not my place, but they're my friend. But So I thought that entire tension between our two main characters, Arnie and Dennis, was really, really well done. The part I think that I found most interesting was actually the mystery surrounding Christine and the entire idea of um, Mr. LeBay and and what was Christine's past like. I thought that was my favorite segment in the entire book. I also wasn't really prepared for how tragic this book would end up being, and so the ending really took me by surprise, and it was very cinematic, and so I really, really want to watch the movie now because I just know that this is one where the adaptation could elevate the source material so well. I feel like the biggest downfall, again, is that just 
I feel like it's a bit too long. It could have been cut down. It doesn't need to be 600-ish pages, but that's fine because I feel like it's another Stephen King book where he landed the ending. The characters were very, very thought-provoking. The, the car is so iconic and the mystery elements have a very good resolution to them. So yeah, overall, this was a very solid book and I'm very glad that I read it and could form an opinion on this such an iconic piece of horror literature. The one thing that I kind of am curious for, and skip over to the next book because I will be spoiling Christine, but you know how Dennis steals Lee from Arnie? I want to know what people think about that because I was like, oh darn, you know, that's not really good bro code over there. I thought it was a very interesting choice because it showed because it showed Dennis in a more morally gray light and I feel like the entire time you understand Lee as well because the person that she loved is fading and being destroyed and you know that takes a toll on you as well you know and so I yeah I thought I thought that was really well done. I thought it was a brave choice. And I really felt bad for Arnie. I truly feel like he's the victim in all of this. And yeah, I don't know. I just wanted him to be happy and we didn't get that. So uh, anyways, moving on to the third book that I read for this challenge. The Eyes of the Dragon is such a polarizing book in the Stephen King sphere because I mean, hey, the response to this book inspired Misery, which is one of my top three Stephen King books now. So going into this, my main question would, was, is this truly as bad as everyone made it out to be? And although I definitely wasn't the target demographic for this, I don't think it was that bad. It's a solid children's tale. I also had the bonus of I did start the Dark Tower and so I liked kind of thinking of the connections because you know we have Randall Flagg appearing again, we have a King Roland and I think Delane is also mentioned, right? Is that the, it's, is that the uh, gunslinger area kingdom, right? I don't know. Okay, please correct me in the comments, but Delane sounded familiar. <laughs> oh yeah, for context, I only read the gunslinger, so please don't spoil me. But yeah, I feel like this is a really good introduction to Stephen King for little ones. There is a little passage about flaccid intimate parts, but other than that, like if you just skip over that sentence, I think you'd be fine reading this to, you, to your children. Something that I found very interesting is that the two main characters that are really the hearts of the story, uh, which are the king's sons, Thomas and Peter, even though one literally tortures puppies and the other is, you know, the paragon, the perfect child, whatever, I feel like both of these kids are very well-rounded and it's never shown that one is only evil and one is only good. In fact, I felt like Thomas really was dealt an unfair hand and it does an interesting commentary on how parents project on their children and how these parental pressures are actually the pressures that mold you into the person that you become. And yeah, I really wasn't expecting that from a book that was hated so much and that is written like a fairy tale. Now, a pet peeve of mine is that I don't really love when books are written in this fairy tale-esque language. Uh, I really don't like that. I feel like it worked here for the purposes of what Stephen King was trying to do. It doesn't suit my personal taste. So again, it's a book that I'm very glad that I read. Isn't one of my favorite Stephen Kings? Absolutely not. But I definitely think that it is overhated. And that's a fact. Now, I ended out the month with reading one of Stephen King's Big Chunkers. I finally read it. And do I think it is his masterpiece and best work that he's ever written? No, <laughs> I think Pet Cemetery was so much better. <laughs> I was just comparing everything to Pet Cemetery because Pet Cemetery was so impactful to me. I, yeah, it was so impactful to me. But that being said, as someone who hasn't really watched the movies, I, I watched clips, but I never really watched the full movie. I was really shocked to find out that in the book, the past and the present are intertwining, right? So you get a chapter from when they were kids and then a chapter from when they are adults. And I knew going into it that people tend to prefer the children's storyline. And I know I've given some crazy takes recently, but I'm gonna give another one because I prefer the adult storyline. <laughs> 
I know, I know, I know, that's crazy. Maybe because I found the relationships that they form as adults to be very interesting. For example, Bill and his wife Audra, Bev and her husband Tom, I believe it was. You know, I was rooting for Ben and Bev. He was my cutie patootie of the book, you know, my favorite character. What I do have to concede is that I feel like the past storyline in isolation is better. And I, I really don't think you can argue with that because all of the monsters that it presents itself as are directly related to some inherent fears or traumatizing experiences that these children had. In the present storyline, it's kind of more of a round two, but not really. I enjoyed the new stuff more. And it also wasn't really like 50-50, I think. I felt like it was maybe like 65-35 when it comes to past versus present. The scenes that Stephen King decided to depict in the present storyline were very, very powerful. So to summarize my thoughts, I think that the past storyline is better as its own narrative, but because we have the context of that while reading the present storyline, I think overall the present storyline utilizes, utilizes that past storyline so well and so I feel like all the emotions uh, are heightened and the stakes are also so much more personal I think because of those personal relationships to the spouses and to the return of Henry Bowers. That being said, I also really loved Mike's segments of figuring out the past of Derry and the incidents and so all those things that interject the narrative, I think Stephen King really, really nailed those down. They were perfect. Uh, the first sentence of this book is insane. It's one of the best opening sentences that I ever read. And the one scene that I do want to touch upon, because I want to give my take, is uh, the Bev scene at the very end. And those who know, know. I was actually in the grocery store listening to the audiobook when it came on and I was walking through the aisles looking for my coconut milk and chicken or whatever because I was going to make curry and I was like I can't deny that it's a weird scene but my kind of take on it is sure did it detract a little bit from the ending in my opinion yeah but I don't think I can really lower my rating too much just because of that scene because of the rest of the book was really, really solid. But yeah, I'm very glad that I finally read It. It is so iconic and the entire concept of It, I was very shocked about it because, you know, I was uninitiated and I thought that it was just It, Pennywise, the scary clown. The first time it is described, I think, is when Georgie in like one of the very first chapters goes down into the basement and Stephen King describes it as he's just so scared that when he reaches his hand in right before he turns on the lights that something will get him and it just it's indescribable but it's terrifying and it feels real and Notice that I keep saying it. It's this indescribable it that's different for everyone, but it is their biggest fear. I, I loved that description. But yeah, so that's all my thoughts on these four books. Now, to answer the question, did I fall back in love with Stephen King? Yeah, I definitely did. Yeah! I'm so happy that we had this redemption arc and I can't wait to read more Stephen King and uh, I think I'm gonna continue with The Dark Tower next but let me know what books you think I should read next from Stephen King especially now if you know a little bit more of my tastes. Anyways, thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. That's all for me and I'll see you next time. Bye bye <laughs>